I told my husband, like, I'll do the birthday parties, but I kind of just, you can go to your Halloween parties. Just want to stay at home, get a bucket of ice cream, and <laughs> watch movies. Like, that's all I want to do. Yeah. I don't want to get dressed up. I don't right. really want, I just, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. That's the best type of holiday. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. When you don't actually have to do anything, including getting dressed. Yeah. That's the best. So, but then he's like, well, I deserve a Halloween party because I had to take Chloe to a birthday party. He, I'm like, I have, how many have I taken Chloe to? You've taken her to one. And he was like, nothing to talk about. I'm like, there were guys at that party. It was our neighbor, you know? <laughs> and he's like, I just had to hang out there with all the girls. And they were talking about cosmopolitan nail oh, polish. Oh, yeah. I was, I was I like, that, party yeah. <laughs> that would be a quick in and out. Yeah. All right, well, we have another party. I know, party, yeah. So, love you so much. Thanks for inviting us. we got to go. Well, I told them, I was uh-huh. like, you could stay the one you want. Sorry, I was on dog show, so. Yeah. yeah. Like you want to try, see if you can scoop forward a little bit yeah. so she doesn't have to look. Oh, that's a good point. Please rotate. I think that's good. Okay. Is that better? Still I'm still in frame. <laughs> Is that yourself? Yeah, I think we're all still in frame. Okay, good. How's Trey? Is he, he, he owns his own construction company, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's been busy. He's probably got jobs at the end of the year. Like right now he's doing the cabinet replacing for the kitchen. And then there's another couple that bought a house and they're having to do a whole bunch of stuff before they move in, like tiling two bathrooms and all mm-hmm. that crazy stuff. And another guy in Pelzer, he lives in Florida, but he's bought up all these houses in Pelzer. Mm-hmm. And so he's redoing, he's doing custom cabinets for his kitchen. So. He's been keeping busy too. Yeah. yeah. So nice. Greenville is definitely the place to keep you busy and not really. Yeah. About I think it's like everywhere. Just mm-hmm. So I mean, even it's funny how the houses are getting picked up in hells that are like all these and they're getting redone. So mm-hmm. um, on Main Street, one of the real estate companies bought up three like trash houses and they're redoing it for single family homes. Mm-hmm. And there's something I think I don't know if they're. It's just going to be a nice thing for, I don't know what they're doing with it, but it's it's a project, so it kind of looks cool. It's been seeing, yeah. it's seeing transformation there. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to blow my nose before we get started. We got a new kitty, mm-hmm. and I'm allergic to cats. Oh, really? And she's indoor cat until she's big enough to be a safe uh, indoor outdoor cat. Ah, gotcha. Aww. We're not super big cat people. Yeah. Kittens are really once, once she becomes a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Think for yourself. Yeah. As yeah. long as I don't touch them, or if I adjust a cat, I have to wash my hands right mm-hmm. away. Because as long as I touch my face, I think yeah. it's like enzymes in your saliva. That's kind of right with dogs. Like mm-hmm. um, if they touch here or my neck, the sensitive parts, like I'll break out in little time. hives. But yeah. with the cats, it's breathing. I start to get really wheezy. Oh wow. I'm going to try to just chit chat right up until the moment that we go yeah. so you don't have to think about it. Hey guys, I'm Crystal from the Dog Psychology and Training Center. It's my husband Eric. And we are ha- here, higher, we are here live with Dr. Natasha. And she's going to talk to us about how chiropractic adjustments can actually help your dog, not only with their attitudes, some good and bad attitudes, but with um, like internal problems as well as external um, problems and misalignments of the spine. So um, do you want to start with a little brief introduction about who you are and how you came to chiropractic and what you do? Sure, not a problem. So again, I'm Dr. Natasha Jaskowitz. It's very nice to be here tonight. And uh, how I came to chiropractic, I was actually a horse trainer. Um, and I guess in my earlier years, let me back up a little bit more. <laughs> my dad, he had a chiropractic issue that we did not know was a chiropractic issue at the time, but he was unable to walk um, due to a back issue. And so one of the girls in my volleyball team, her dad happened to be a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said, you should, God needs to come see my dad. And he literally, we had to carry him in and he walked out of that visit. Wow. So wow. that was such a profound impact That's on our family. Huge, yeah. Not just for the chiropractic, or people just look at chiropractic for back pain, mm-hmm. but I mean, that just helped his whole entire function. So. Um, the more we got to learn more about chiropractic, I ended up going, I didn't have any issues at that time, but I played a lot of sports. So volleyball, 
was a big one for me and riding horses, horse mm -hmm. transports and stuff like that. We come off horses every once in a while. <laughs> and so it was actually good to stay under a normal chiropractic adjustment schedule yeah. to just keep you functioning as best as possible. So, you know, I never thought about doing an animal chiropractor or becoming an animal chiropractor for a long time. I went into business when I went to college and when I graduated, I got into horse training and every horse that I got in, um, you know, they were either, they had some sort of behavioral issue or they weren't picking up a certain lead or there was just something performance wise that was going on with them. And I would take care of saddle fit, uh, putting the right equipment with fit and mm -hmm. making sure their shoe angles were right. And a chiropractor would come out to my barn uh, to work on a horse that had a bad injury. It had gotten cast in its stall and um, just would hang its head in the corner. Never thought about chiropractic horses. She came up for this horse. And, uh, you know, after a couple of visits, all of a sudden the horse started hanging its head out, back over the stall, started being mm -hmm. or social. And um, the vet had said that this horse was not going to be rideable again because of how bad the injury was. Yeah. And within two months, the girl was able to get up on him bareback and ride him at a walk or trot. He wasn't going to be back to his performance level, but yeah. to have a good quality of wow. life, that was really that amazing awesome. to watch. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up having this chiropractor come out and adjust every horse that I got him for training. Like That was one of the first things. They had a vet assessment, and then the chiropractor came out and did their chiropractic assessment adjustment. And then I got everything fitted, everything right. So by the time I got on the horse, whatever issue they came mm -hmm. in for was greatly minimized yeah. or had just completely gone. That's awesome. And so then it would be retraining that rider. So it was a really cool thing. It's like, wow, you know, if chiropractic can affect that attitude there, yeah, like, yeah. how better of a relationship the owner can have with their horse. And mm -hmm. that was the one thing that I always loved. I wanted to allow for that good relationship or allow owners to um, work uh, in unity with the horses so they would have a better uh -huh. relationship. And so when, you, when you're when you happy, the owner's happy, the horse is happy, I mean you just get to go carry on with life. And so you see that also too with dog owners. Mm -hmm. And so, um, well that's, that's I guess how I got into chiropractic. Okay. Uh, I saw... Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's so. so awesome. I didn't know any of this. So oh. Really yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so what brought you to dogs then? Like, did you do them both at the same time when you started, or did you kind of grow into one? So, well, no, um, you know, I had I had a dog, uh, but when I graduated from chiropractic school, it was uh, mostly horse and rider teams. So okay. I was getting them adjusted so they could work as best as possible and perform as best mm -hmm. as possible together. But then every horse person has probably a dog, yeah. or <laughs> and a cat, yeah. or a chicken, or a snake, or a iguana, like lots of random animals. Uh -huh. um, all these spines. Yep, so <laughs> <laughs> all these various spines, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but so, you know, that's how I ended up getting more into dogs. And from there, after a couple of years, I had some performance dogs that started coming under my mm -hmm. care, and then I started to really zone it, well, split half and half with my horse patients, but zone in on performance dogs, so agility dogs, obedience dogs, confirmation mm -hmm. dogs, um, you know, and dogs that compete on the world team. Mm -hmm. We have a great area here in Greenville, South Carolina that has some phenomenal dog people, and um, so getting to work with these dogs for performance stuff, but even, you know, your, your lap dog mm -hmm. is very yeah. important, or your seniors mm -hmm. that start to not be able to function as well mm -hmm. as they used to, um, you know, that's they needed care too, and just to help them have a better quality of life was yeah. great. Because I know like when I, I can tell when I need to get adjusted because I get grumpy. <laughs> but usually yeah. I stay on a good maintenance schedule because I never want to get to that point. Right. Yeah. But there are some weeks that are, that can be a lot more stressful, whether it's physically stressful or emotionally mm -hmm. stressful, where I do need, do need some extra TLC. Yeah. My husband will even say, honey, you know, you should go visit your friend on the road. <laughs> so I get adjusted, so I get it. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's in cool. terms of getting into dogs, that's mm -hmm. how it all started from the horses. Very cool. So mm -hmm. that makes total sense because our, our two-year-old, we've been going to a chiropractor since our son was born and he had some issues nursing and as soon as he was seen by a chiropractor, he nursed perfectly. So we've been, we've been sold after that. Like, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, so we go to the, <laughs> the chiropractor and our two-year-old would have like a two-year-old tantrum and we just like terrible too. She's like, oh, she needs an adjustment. And she would literally walk out happy. She'd go in screaming and just like one bump on the wall and just melt down. She'd walk out just like, cool. Oh. And I'm like, oh my, it's so amazing how just, it seems like such a, a little thing adjusting the spine can just 
instantly flip a switch in some attitudes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so how do you find, um, well, let's start with external. So obviously if a dog has a noticeable limp or it's mm -hmm. something that's physically you know, yeah. off, you know that they need an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And obviously adjustments can help heal those issues. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about how that is beneficial versus just going to a vet and seeing what the vet does. Well, no, so we work in conjunction with the vet. Okay. So there are some people that come because it's just more maintenance, wellness mm -hmm. stuff, performance. There might not be any issue, yeah. but if they compete quite a bit, it's recovery time. Mm -hmm. So one of the easiest things that we can do is adjust them so that that actually reduces the recovery time that they need mm -hmm. so they can start performing again. Now, like with... Um, that's actually refer us quite a few patients mm -hmm. because of stuff like the owner might not want to do long-term medications, anti-inflammatories yeah. or painkillers because that is hard on their yes. kidneys and livers or organs and stuff like that. And so the owner might look for alternative ways and that's when the vet's like, you know what, why don't you try chiropractic care, mm -hmm. see if it's a chiropractic issue. Um, and things that we look for, it could be a simple, something that's not noticeable, but um, as they sit, but they sit on, sit on one hip constantly. Uh -huh. Or when they lay down, they're always slipping to that mm -hmm. one hip or something like that. Like more noticeable ones or issues are a limp. Uh -huh. um, other ones, people will say, oh, my dog's just gotten older and he just doesn't want to jump in and out of the car anymore uh -huh. or go up the stairs or he's a little bit um, unsure of wooden floors. Mm -hmm. Those are a couple other signs that might, might not just be age-related but might be something going on with the dysfunction of the nervous system, which, you know, with chiropractic, we address it through the spinal column because the spine protects that nervous system. So the communication between the brain and the body. Um, Do you want to explain that a little bit more? Because, like, we've been seeing a chiropractor for a little bit, so we get it, but there's probably some people out there that don't yeah, fully get that. Yeah, so. so now it's so important for the body to be able to communicate with the brain and vice versa, and it's able to do it through this communication nerve highway called the nervous system. So you've got the brain, the spinal cord, and all these nerves that branch out between the vertebrae and the spine to every organ, tissue, cell in the body. So that's how the brain's able to communicate with the body and tell it like, or have it perform as efficiently as possible or just move in general. So now as chiropractors, we go in and find areas um, in this information highway that might be affected, um, like there might be a decreased range of motion in one joint, mm -hmm. but that um, restricted okay. motion can affect other areas on the spine and also then affect the communication between where that nerve is traveling through to the brain and back. And so we go in there, we find these areas through our assessment um, and a, use a very gentle adjustment to get that joint moving the way it's supposed to be and um, remove that distortion in the spine so that the body can then reset Mm -hmm. and function better and then that's where the healing process is. it's not us doing the healing process but we're setting up the body so that it has freer communication so it can have a healing process yeah. and so the the body is an amazing thing like you get a cut you don't have to do anything about it it will heal you right. know you might put a band-aid on it or some you know wash it out put some medication but the body is smart enough to heal yeah. and so when you when you have these issues called subluxations that decreases that ability to heal so that's where having um, chiropractic care will help with that awesome. aspect of it. That was awesome. That was a really so. cool explanation. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah we've, we've heard a lot, and some of them are like, what? Um, that made perfect sense, so I love it. Um, so tell us how chiropractic can help internal things that they may not think that an adjustment would help. Okay. Yeah, so I, I mm -hmm. actually I texted my dad, and I mm -hmm. told him we were having a guest on, and, and something about chiropractic, and uh, he was like, Oh, is your back hurting you? And I was like, that, that's not really like, or I, I, I think I mentioned that we were having a chiropractor on the show and I told him that I was getting an adjustment. This was the other day. So he was like, oh, is your back hurting you? And I was like, well, not right now. Like, that's not the only reason to go to a chiropractor. Right. And he was like, my what? Like, and, and I was like, yeah, I mean, that was exactly my response before somebody gave me an explanation like that. Yeah. I was like, why do you go to a chiropractor like twice a week? Like, yeah. you're, you can walk, right? Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, where was I going with this? Help me. So, so how chiropractic can heal things? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so much that stuff that's not not, mm -hmm. not about posture or correlate like with the spine, or pain but or anything. With the nervous yeah, yeah. system. So well, it, you know, it's fine. We, the nervous system controls every single system in your body. So without your nervous system, you're not like your nervous system. It goes to the heart. It goes to the intestine. Mm -hmm. So it aids in digestion. Um, it goes to your reproductive system. So and 
also a bowel and bladder movement, um, to say it more nicely. <laughs> uh, but so, for example, I have had dogs that come in because of digestive issues, mm -hmm. and so either they, um, their vet's trying to figure out if they have a few food allergy or something like that, and they're not finding anything specific with this dog, but it's throwing up every so often, mm -hmm. and um, so they're like, you know, go visit the chiropractor, and sometimes we'll find uh, subluxations in areas where those nerves go to that digestive system. Mm -hmm. So if that's um, compromised, then we can at least adjust it and get that functioning better, and we usually see an improvement with awesome. it. But it's like, it's not cookie cutter, it's different for every single mm -hmm. dog, and um, you also have to rule out if there is a medical emergency, you know, mm -hmm. in that case. But so. Another example, I get to see quite a few dogs with urinary incontinence, uh -huh. or you know, um, one lady, she came for a different reason, it was a disc issue, uh -huh. but she's like, you know what, I realize my dog only poops like ev once every three days. I'm like, that's not normal. <laughs> that's not good. So, you know, we check and sometimes we'll find some sacral subluxations or even subluxations in the neck that could be affecting that hind end. Um, and then that, we see improvements with that. So, you know, we these subluxations, I look at it as that's the root cause of an issue, mm -hmm. and um, you know, chiropractic is just a way to address it. And the side effect is like we see improvements with these symptoms, but we're not looking to treat a particular system right. or a, a symptom, I should say. I'm looking more. I want to see how much better we can get the body functioning, so then it could do it and heal in the way that it needs to. You know, somebody might come in for a digestive issue, but then we see improvements in other things, and so. It, the body will decide what what yeah. path it takes what to heal. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so it those those are coming some of the internal stuff and again with urinary mm -hmm. incontinence that can be due to a pelvic or mm -hmm. lumbar mis misalignment um, that can be affecting the nerves that go to the bladder. Um, so that's how it can affect the, the internal stuff. You have again ev there's nerves that go to these internal organs mm -hmm. that can be affected. So. Um, that's why it's another reason to have your spine checked because there are some times where you just, you're like, ah, I feel okay, I'm great, but you know, how many people have you heard that, you know, they feel great, they go in for their doctor's check, and they have stage three cancer. Yeah. So you, or have I mean, a heart attack the next day. Yeah. And yeah. so um, that's why just because you're feeling good doesn't mean mm -hmm. that your the body doesn't need some extra help. Yeah. It's just, it could be like the symptoms have gotten it haven't gotten that bad, but your body might be giving you some warning signs right. before your dog does, like just yeah. that little hip cock uh -huh. or the head tilts. Not uh -huh. like when they're looking cute and they're right. like, oh, they're like this, to you. but if they're all, they kind of just have a slight head tilt all the time or, you know, yeah. dogs that get ear infections in one side only. Mm -hmm. Those are like some, some kind of heads up that they should yeah. be checked by a chiropractor. Yeah. That's such a great point. Um, so for us, um, seeing a, a chiropractor and just changing your diets and eating cleaner, we find that there are some foods like dairy. Um, I have ate dairy my mm -hmm. whole life and not had any issues. And then all of a sudden, I found out, um, well, actually it was Alaska who had the noticeable eye change, yeah, eye color change. About that. And so we, we cut out dairy and when we introduced it back, complete 360 like in her attitude. Like she was crazy, uh, mm -hmm. just almost obnoxious. Like I just couldn't, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> um, and so for myself, when I have dairy now, mm -hmm. there's like instant pain, like I yeah. feel it. But our bodies adapt. Like mm -hmm. my whole life, I had symptoms. Yeah. But 95% of the time, I felt great. And yeah. I thought I was healthy. Mm -hmm. But I would just have these little quirks, like little stomach pains here or there that I would, you know, rule off or something, one thing yeah. or another. Like I must have ate, you know, whatever it was. Uh, but it's so true for dogs. They have such a high pain tolerance that mm -hmm. if us humans get used to our, our pain, quote unquote, like we just, we adjust to it. We don't yeah. feel it because it's so constant. Um, and I think that's super important for our dogs who naturally don't show any pain mm -hmm. um, until it's almost too late. Mm -hmm. So just because your dog looks fine, just because your dog's walking fine, um, I'm sure there's a difference between me looking at a dog walk and you looking at a dog <laughs> walk. And I'm like, oh, it looks great. And you're like, no, no, it's got this, this, and this. And, yeah, it's just... <laughs> Funny story, we were in Colorado one time and I, we were out of a park and I was watching ducks walk. I'm like, oh my gosh, a duck needs to get a I mean, that's how my brain works. I can't be like, oh, let's enjoy the scenery. I'm like, that duck has an obvious limp there. You probably struggle going to the zoo. Yeah, I like do, exactly yeah. Like every animal. 
Yeah, we went to Boo, Boo in the Zoo the other night, and I just like just 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 look. But then you're looking at people, and you're like, oh my gosh, you're gay, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's like it's everywhere wherever you look. Everywhere there's walking. Yeah, but no, oh you bring up a great point because animals are great compensators. They don't mm -hmm. want. It's like um, survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. And so if you show weakness, that's like a yeah. pack member will turn on yes. you, or you get left behind. Mm -hmm. So, and you have some dogs that are just way more stoic than others. Yes. Um, there's one of my dog patients jumped off what was equivalent to two stories landing on cement below when the owner ran down to go find it. She was standing and this is a Malinois and um, she was like she wasn't giving me any indicator that she like anything but she's like she went off the side she didn't know how she landed um, she brought her in to get checked after mm -hmm. she'd gone to her vet and I felt something up in her jaw I'm like you need to go back to your vet and she ended up having a cracked tooth mm -hmm. but so but there are some things you could I could feel where she probably had wow. landed and uh -huh. so but getting t she got her to me within 24 hours so that was like a great time when you let it set in the body will adapt to it becomes a new normal yeah. and so then the body starts compensating and then compensating for those compensations yeah. and stuff like that so you know, so and you know, when, when you say compensating, mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by that? So what I mean like, so if you have an injury or even a subluxation, what we've talked about before, um, the body then starts to compensate. So a subluxation restricts movement in that area, but then another area has to move more to make up for that restricted motion. Okay. So in like when you injure, so if a dog has an ACL injury or has hip dysplasia on one side or elbow dysplasia or a bone spur somewhere, they're gonna start compensating by changing how they move mm -hmm. to make up for that movement. They're gonna do what's ever gonna be most comfortable for okay. them. So, so that, that'll so. probably affect like the muscles and joints and stuff in mm -hmm. other spots. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and you have to think dogs walk on four legs. Like we walk on our two legs. We could get away if we, or get away with it if we bump up a shoulder. Yeah. Like, you can get away without affecting our hips too much, but if a dog, something's going on left yeah. front or an arthritic mm -hmm. changes in the toes, that can affect the contralateral side, so the right hind, um, and vice versa, the, the neck on the same side because that there's not, they're not getting a full range of motion. Every mm -hmm. single joint needs to move in unison, or not in unison, but as effectively as possible mm -hmm. so that you know they can have, move as efficiently as yeah. possible. That makes mm -hmm. sense, that makes sense. So we've talked a little bit um, about internal and external helps. Sometimes they, we have we have families that call us because the dog suddenly became aggressive, mm -hmm. and so we'll ask them background questions like how long has it been going on? You know what triggered it? You know if if, if a child found the dog and it nipped at the kid, I think that's logical. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with that dog. Maybe depending on the severity of the nip, we might need to see him to make sure yeah. he has bite inhibition. Yeah. But that's a legit excuse. Yeah. Um, but a dog who was fine mm -hmm. and somebody just walked into the room to reach down and pet it and it bit for the first time, mm -hmm. our first step is always, um, you know, we can help behavior problems, but we can't help the body or mm -hmm. mental issues. So we, mm -hmm. um, we like to refer them out for a chiropractic adjustment before they come mm -hmm. for dogs that have spontaneous aggression. Like yeah. all of a sudden, you know, he's been really crabby. Mm -hmm. or, and, and sometimes it's like the dog's been doing this for a year, mm -hmm. but the first four years of its life, it was never like this. Yeah. So I'm like, well, what happened at that time? And a lot of times it would be something, um, you know, if it's more recent, they can remember. Like, well, we were playing outside the day before, mm -hmm. playing fetch, and, you know, we had a pit bull that we, was it a frisbee or a soccer ball? It went too high, and he tried to catch it, and he mm -hmm. landed wrong. Yeah. And uh, and he, we, this is before we knew about um, chiropractic for humans, let alone dogs. Uh, well, we, we knew about it, but we didn't. We don't understand it. Yeah. Um, and so we had to take him to the vet because mm -hmm. he, he landed wrong. Yeah. And so some things like that, if we wouldn't have taken him in, could mm -hmm. have led to an aggressive, mm -hmm. reactive dog because he was in pain yeah. or the body was out of alignment, which just puts the entire system off, right? And then yeah. releases cortisol, that stress hormone yeah. that makes us irrational and gain weight. <laughs> Nobody wants it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, tell us a little bit about, like, if you've seen cases where a dog has been um, reactive or nippy and mm -hmm. it was something out of the line. So, you know, um, just to back up a little bit, I mean, something like that, so in terms of attitude change, it could be something that started from the birthing process or mm -hmm. in utero, and it just, the body adapted, adapted until like one certain movement just made it where it was very, it's like constant headache. You know how you feel when you have a right. constant, and you're, like you can be snappy at people um, or something mm -hmm. like that. So kind of same thing can happen with a dog. 
Um, there was one dog that came in from, um, it was having some dog aggression issues and it had been, they adopted it out a year mm -hmm. old, so they really didn't know what the prior history was. Yeah. And I saw it for the first time at two and a half years old because they're like, no, we're over this. Mm -hmm. He just, when we go to try to put a collar on him, he just wants to bite us and mm -hmm. attack us and we're working with the dog trainer right mm -hmm. now. And so I came in, cutest little thing, got him and found a couple of subluxations. And you know, you could tell there's one spot when I got my hands and you could feel that energy there and you could feel him just like, I'm not gonna breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and she brought her muzzle, you know, she had him muzzled because she's like, you know, I just I yes. want to make sure you're mm -hmm. safe. That's and, important. Um, and so got it. And just like, you could just feel him take a deep oh. breath of air. And so then we let him, he sh shook out. And then I was like, okay, sit, get your treat. Because I get him treats too. Mm -hmm. And her, both her and her mom looked at me and they're like, he's never sat the whole time we've owned him this past year. I'm like, what do you mean? Or a year and a half. I'm like, what do you mean he's never sat? Right. And so she's like, you know, he started off fine when they had him, but then he started progressing get more. And so that's when I was like, well, he sits fine now. So we're thinking there was an issue back in his lower back in that mm -hmm. pelvic area that was really contributing to part of his behavior. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. as he got regularly adjusted, then his attitude improved. Yes. But we still, it wasn't clearing up as mm -hmm. well as we would have liked. So we did um, refer him back to the vet mm -hmm. to do x-rays because they never did baseline x-rays. Yeah. And that for such a young dog, he did have some arthritic changes in the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he was telling, he was progressively, but, you know, the owner was like, okay, we're doing behavior, we're, sit, you need to sit, lay down. And then yeah. he's getting pissed off yeah. because he's like, I don't want to do this work. It I don't hurts. want to put a collar on. Hurts. I don't want to go to yeah. the dog trainer because you make me do this stuff. Uh -huh. And so, and then you have other dogs, um, you know, that uh, they're looked at a little bit more as aggressive dogs. So the owner feels like they have to be more aggressive yes. with them. Yes. And, so, and more restriction, more yeah, pulling on the leash. More pulling, corrective-ish uh -huh. collars and stuff like that. walking tight on the leash so the dog's like basically being hung. <laughs> yes. And so, and those can induce some neck issues that can also um, go to behavioral changes. Yeah. And like sometimes when our dogs get older with the arthritic changes and they don't feel comfortable, like somebody will be like, oh, I was petting my dog and all of a sudden he growled at me. Yep. And so I'm like, they're giving you indicators right. here and there that, yeah. you know, and once it gets to where they can't um, adapt um, anymore mm -hmm. and they become really, they just don't want any part of it. So the mm -hmm. first thing to do is to react and fight or flight. Right. And so, and some dogs are fighters, some dogs yeah. are fleers. They'll yeah. just run away. Or, you know, they'll go hide, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, I mean, those things can definitely affect the attitude yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So do you notice for like specific breeds, I'm thinking like dachshunds and corgis, who have, they have such stocky legs and long spines, so they have more, I don't want to say need, because I think every dog and every human needs to see a chiropractor, but do you think they have more risk that would cause more mm -hmm. like elongated spinal issues yes. earlier on in life than like a... A German Shepherd, or yeah. which German Shepherds have a whole other need for a chiropractor. That's bad. <laughs> So uh, let's say like a lab, like a square dog, you know? Yeah. Um, well, you have different because you have to take in the confirmation aspect of it and then you have to take in the mental aspect of it. Uh -huh. So like, so especially for those short leg, long back dogs, uh -huh. such as corgis and dachshunds, yeah, they definitely benefit quite a bit in getting them started earlier. I think every puppy should be handed with a chiropractor's card. Or, right. <laughs> so, yeah. but just because of the impact of coming mm -hmm. down off a couch, you know, the short mm -hmm. legs, long back, mm -hmm. that causes a lot of concussion up in the shoulders yeah. and the lower neck. And also that mid back area mm -hmm. um, is when they jump up or jump into a car or down. And you know what? Owners love to carry their little dogs everywhere. So they're not getting the natural movement that they should. Mm -hmm. And if it's a Dotson, they'll pick them up right from their middle area. So mm -hmm. they continuously stress that uh, mid portion of their man. spine. Yeah versus picking them up to where they don't have that right. bend in the so spine. What you just demonstrated was picking them up through the hind legs up to the yeah. chest. Yeah, or I mean at least to where it's square so that they're not getting the, that excess pressure uh -huh. right okay. in the middle. Uh -huh. And so, or you know, you'll see some people, some people that are really good at picking up by a collar and it's pretty straight, <laughs> but then there's others that are just like, I just can't bend down, so they're pulling the dog's oh, cane. Yeah. <laughs> like hanging the so dog I was like, let's get her. your shoulders checked. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and I, I just make sure when I, if I see it when they come in, I just make sure to hand the dog before they walk out. So I'm like, oh, we still, we'll yeah. do that. So yeah, with those little dogs, you know, you have more active dogs such as Border Collies. They tend to, what I see is that, you know, with their, um, they kind of tend to have a little bit more of a hypermobile frame. And so those ones you definitely, because they're just so active and uh -huh. they do a lot. Well, and they're, but, they're they tend to be stressed, the control mm -hmm. freaks too. Oh, yeah. So adding that, that stress, mm -hmm. that tight body to those yeah. already active joints. Mm -hmm. 
And you have to, you know, talking about stresses, a couple different stresses. You've got your physical stresses. Mm -hmm. So dogs, like dogs that pull on their collar, they create their own stress. So mm -hmm. it's not just like in people handling. It, it, it works both ways. Uh -huh. Dogs that, you know, aren't taught to walk properly on the lead or whatnot, uh -huh. um, that pull and constantly strain the air. You have to yeah. think every message from the brain has to pass through the neck. Yes. So that's why it's very important there and to learn how to leave your dog properly or mm -hmm. have somebody work with you to show you yeah. how you can best teach your dog to do that. Yeah. Um, and so the physical stress is getting hit by cars, another yeah. one, or T-boned by another dog. Those are things that can all expect, or affect that spinal system, mm -hmm. but the emotional stresses. So mm -hmm. being like a dog that gets put in a boarding situation and they're like, oh my gosh, my owner's left me and they stress for two weeks. Yeah. Um, that can have a huge physical impact yes. on the spine because you know muscles contract and they get mm -hmm. stressed and worried. The cortisol levels are like just 24 seven. And cortisol doesn't let the body heal. No, mm -mm, it does not. So, um, and also the training environments can be can be stressful for certain mm -hmm. dogs if they have an owner that's constantly yelling at their dog. <laughs> I see that with some of the obedience dogs that come in and you could just see they're just like, uh, mm -hmm. because they're, they're so yeah. afraid to do something yes. wrong, yes. you know? So, um, you have those dogs and, um, also too, there have been some situations where, um, dogs felt like they're forced to do, they're not jumping or something. We had this mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah, yeah. And so like this dog was not jumping jumps and they're like trying to get everything to do to make this dog jump jumps. Uh -huh. It's a young dog. And so they resorted to an e-collar. Every time the dog didn't jump, it got the e-collar. Well, it turned out that dog had some arthritic changes uh -huh. in the low back. And so, I mean, it was trying, it's, you could tell this dog every yeah. time it came to the jump when I was watching it, it was trying it was so hard yeah. and, and it wanted to be good, but there was a physical reason yeah. for that. So yes. if your dog stops doing something, you gotta evaluate that right. aspect of it. Right. And Instead I think of saying they, they're a just good to trainer and a good owner, because technically owners are your dog's teachers. Yeah. You're teaching your dogs every second of every day. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times where dogs do put up roadblocks and they're like, no, I'm not listening to you anymore. <laughs> and that's a different approach yeah. versus a dog who suddenly stops yeah. and you have to think, well, for us as dog trainers, because mental energy is really exhausting, we have to know, like, I think I think he's tired. Like, mm -hmm. I think he's not being a jerk. Like, he's not yeah. refusing to listen. He's just done. Yeah. You have to yeah, let yeah. him rest. <laughs> like, go put him in his crate for two hours. And yes, his crate, not the couch where he's constantly exposed to stimulus, but yeah. let him rest. Um, and so that's a great point, too, that, mm -hmm. like, those, that, what did you call it? What kind of stress? Mental stress. Emotional stress. That kind of stress. Yes, you know, all that stress. Um, that's such an important um, mm -hmm. thing to consider with your dogs because yeah. it does inf influence it. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have two topics um, that I have worked with. Um, one was wobblers. Mm -hmm. Is there any, so this was, oh goodness, before we moved, so probably four or five years ago. Um, I had a young Connie Corso puppy who developed wobblers. Mm -hmm. um, and the first day I went in for training, he was, well, he was an aggressive dog, right? He bit yeah. the roommate. So why did he bite? He's, he was friendly to me, again, mm -hmm. being cautious though. Yeah. Um, and then the second or third lesson, I noticed his front paw would kind of shake. Mm -hmm. And he had this really cute swagger when yeah. he walked, he would kind of shake his butt a lot. And he was like super cute. I'm like, that doesn't look right, but I'm not a vet. And so I had her <laughs> take him to her vet. Yeah. The vet said, he just has a fancy show trot. I'm like, okay. I don't think that's a show trial, but I'm not, I don't go to show rings, so who, who am I? So the next time I came, um, he was actually walking on this paw, so mm -hmm. you guys can't see, he was walking like this. So in addition to the paw shaking, he was actually walking, like his front paws was like this. And I'm like, okay, I'm not working him today. I feel yeah. like something's wrong, we need to take him to the vet. They went to the same vet, the vet said he was fine. I'm like, okay. So we had, I think it was like Christmas, Thanksgiving time, and we, went, we stopped seeing each other for a few weeks because of the mm -hmm. holidays, and when I resumed, it was so bad that I just sat on the floor and loved on him the whole session Aww. that we had. And I said, you need to find another vet. <laughs> um, I took him to a specialist, saw another vet. That vet immediately referred her to a specialist, and he had wobblers. Yeah. And so I felt bad as a trainer because mm -hmm. this dog had aggression. Okay. And I'm like, oh. Like, we didn't, we didn't punish him, we didn't do anything mean, but it was just, you know, trying to build relationships so he would trust her to not have to react. Yeah. But I still just felt like, oh, from the beginning, I just, I misunderstood you. <laughs> and it's so many, I think, owners or families have, because they hide their pain so well, yeah. um, that, is that something that chiropractic can help, or is that just kind of a... So, what we do, we co-manage with wobblers. Like, okay. we're not looking to cure or treat right. that. Right, because that's pretty severe. Yeah. Because sometimes they'll have compensations in other areas because you have to think the spinal cord is being compressed mm -hmm. in those areas. Right. And so just to, uh, to I, I don't think I fully understand wobblers. It's like a degeneration of 
something? Well, so, okay, you could have where um, the, what they, the spinal cord is growing faster than the spinal structure okay. of the bone around it, uh -huh. so you get the compression. Um, so it could, and then also too, there could be genetics in play there uh -huh. as well. So basically, there's compression on the cord okay. in, in the cervical area, okay. and so it will change up the gait, whether it's front and back end. Sometimes just the back end, sometimes mm -hmm. just the front end. So um, in that case, like we we have to be really careful around the area. Yeah. Usually, it's diagnosed by MRI. Um, and then also symptoms and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta be really careful about the area. So yeah. that's where leash or collars, um, careful handling of collars uh -huh. is very important. But uh, you know, if they do show symptoms, they usually have a change in gait. Uh -huh. And so we're helping decrease those compensations so it still can have as best of a quality of life. Right. So um, I end up seeing more, uh, I've got a couple more horse patients have a lot of yeah. versus dogs, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, same concept, we just help keep them going as mm -hmm. best as possible, improve their quality of life. Yeah. Some owners do choose to put their animals down because mm -hmm. of it, and then others are like, you know, if they're happy grazing out in the pasture, and they're, you know, doing or their own thing, their own thing or happy being a house dog and yeah. whatnot, then, you know, it's not a big issue, so, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so with wild boars, we do help, but it's more of the compensatory changes that gotcha. happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, and I feel like for even us humans, when we have um, something that, you know, is, for me, I, I just genetically have bad hips and bad knees, mm -hmm. and they're probably always going to be that way, and my, both of my daughters have my hips and my knees, and I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> um, but, but they're seeing a chiropractor so young that we're hoping that they can develop so, properly, yeah. whereas mine is just muscle memory, mine just uh, get pulled out of socket, mm -hmm. so I could definitely see how that, for me, it's just, they're just helping me have a better quality of life. <laughs> for kids, it's great, though, because you're affecting the nervous system as they're growing and yes. developing, you know, yes. like you said, and so, like, it's kind of neat, I get to watch my, I have a four-year-old daughter, so I get to watch her grow and develop under chiropractic. I didn't yes. have that opportunity. Yeah. I'm so jealous. Exactly. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right? I'm trying, like, for a while, I was going, like, every day to a chiropractor. I'm just trying to get normal. Um, but they, they hopefully will be. Yeah. <laughs> well, and our, our so. chiropractor that we're seeing now, for us, mm -hmm. he kind of gave us this analogy. When you have a kid, it's like a like a sapling. If they're yeah. out of alignment a little bit, it's not that hard to get them yeah. straight. But we're like an old tree, you know. <laughs> and if we grow that's, crooked, that's, you know, if you've been too growing much crooked for snap. 20 or 30 years, like, it takes, it takes time. a lot more yeah. time to try and to get that lined up. That is straight. a great analogy. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, so the next one, um, which actually I just had a consult today, um, is a great Dane puppy who had mega esophagus. Okay. So are you familiar with mega esophagus? So I'm guessing it's like, Basically, the muscles are too relaxed, mm -hmm. and they have to basically sit in this, this high chair. It's a chair that keeps them in an upright position, mm -hmm. so they have to eat upright. Um, mostly, it's a, a softer food, so yeah. they, they um, do that. And then they have to be upright for like 10 to 20 or 30 minutes after they eat before they can go on all fours because they'll just uh, throw it back up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I know chiropractic, again, through the nervous system, yeah. adjusting those areas that affect the GI tract and yeah. the stomach. And, and, and that the esophagus would have the same, you know, connection in the spine somewhere. Yeah, so, I mean, just making sure those nerves are functioning as best as possible. Mm -hmm. So, reducing the interference to the brain and the rest of the body. Yeah. That's all we're basically doing. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of different, like, whether it's tracheal esophageal stuff, mm -hmm. um, where that's affected. But performance-wise, you can still help the dog yeah. and help their system as much as possible mm -hmm. so that they can just heal and recover as optimally as possible yeah. there. That's awesome. So, yeah. I did um, refer to a vet, and this was our... An Indiana client, so yeah. um, I did refer a vet there that does adjustments, mm -hmm. and I said, I mean, yeah. it can't hurt. No. <laughs> At this point, just give the puppy everything it can yeah. um, to be um, you know, as qualified as it can just to enjoy life. So mm -hmm. um, I was just curious about that. So I do want to touch upon um, walking your dog and then collars because mm -hmm. um, you hinted upon that. So a lot of people think, well, if my dog pulls, I'm just going to put it on like uh, the gentle leaders yeah. or the harnesses. And mm -hmm. um, we went to a, a canine chiropractic conference three or four years ago where she was talking about well, that actually has like another negative yeah. effect on the spine where it's like a whiplash <laughs> effect. So yeah. um, do you have, and then the same thing for harnesses, you can go put them on a harness, mm -hmm. which still encourages pulling, yeah. but also can have some restriction yeah. of the front shoulders. And mm -hmm. so people don't think about this. I didn't think about this before I talked to a chiropractic vet and I'm like, oh, Duh, it makes sense now. Um, so, do you have any like? So, you know, again, it's going to be each dog mm -hmm. has their, as you go through and evaluate each dog, you'll see yeah. what works best for them, what's going to, um, what, what 
can you use that would use the least amount of pressure on that uh -huh. neck? So a harness might not be the ideal for that dog, right. but it might be great for other dogs that mm -hmm. just stay right beside you. Right. You know, because like if you have a dog that has some elbow issues or arthritic changes in mm -hmm. the elbow or Absolutely. shoulder or tendonitis, that will actually make it worse. Yes. Um, and then there's some harnesses, depending on how they sit, they'll sit on the lower neck, so they're still putting pressure mm -hmm. and forcing that neck backwards. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, uh, with halties, there's some dogs that work really well on a halty, uh -huh. and then there's some people that will still go <laughs> like this, and yes, that is a definitely it can yeah. affect the neck that way. Um, you know, there's some people who use prong collars that their dog might respond really well to because all have to do is do minor right, correction. Right, right, sure. mm -hmm. Then there's other people who use, abuse that prong collar right. and <laughs> jerk up on it. E collars, I know there's a great way to use them. There's uh -huh. also, I've seen, yep. you know, I had a dog that came in that we talked about too that um, it had been misused with an e collar. Uh -huh. And you have to think the electrical stimulation can affect that nervous system. And so, and create a lot of stress around the muscles in the neck. Mm -hmm. So there is a proper way to use everything. You know, there's right. always pros and cons to everything. You just gotta weigh out mm -hmm. what's gonna be best for your dog. Right. The least stressful, yeah. the least invasive. Mm -hmm. And like you said, every uh, dog is different. And that's yeah. super important to us mm -hmm. too, because every dog is different. Yeah. I mean, there's um, a couple years ago, we went to the beach mm -hmm. and we're walking along the beach with our dogs and this guy had his chihuahua on a flexi lead and it would Don't chase and run leads. run and chase the birds and the waves oh, no. and it I would hit the end of the flexi lead and oh, flip no. this dog and the guy's just laughing he's like oh i'm gonna get this on videotape oh, i'm like i got and i just looked at him like you know you're killing your dog i'm right. like i'm like go find a chiropractor get him adjusted we're on vacation so i was like <laughs> and I think he probably gave me it. the worst look at, like, what did is you, this crazy? You That's what I said you it said was. It. I did. I, I, was said, I was just like, some people, you know? <laughs> Way to go. And well, you, have to think, you have to think, every decision, you have to be an ambassador for your dog. Yeah. You know, every decision you make will either lead them towards a healthier life or yeah. it can lead them towards a negative impact, mm -hmm. you know, and little things that we don't think about. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I, I my husband's like, just <laughs> so, um, but yeah, those that's that's not good. Never if your dog likes to run to the end of the leash, don't put them on flexi. Yeah, well, I would feel like flexi leads in general. We don't mm -hmm. recommend them because they're dangerous to humans. Yes, um, when I went to nursing school. There's so many um, burns burn and like yeah, where they tripping people. I broke my arm because I got <sighs> cut underneath. Or dog chase. fights because yeah. they got tangled together and couldn't get apart, yeah. so they just fought. And so flexi leads are just not good. And yeah. I think probably you would agree with this. Um, that because they always suck the dog back in, mm -hmm. that's that constant pressure yeah. on the dog that even if they didn't pull on the leash, mm -hmm. they're still going to get that yeah. pressure um, yeah. that they could have avoided if they had control mm -hmm. of the leash. Given for the dog, it's like being a car accident for people with the whiplash <laughs> of their neck. I mean, you know how stiff you get in the yeah. neck and stuff, and you know you compensate, and you're like, oh, it's not that bad, but it's creating some neurological dysfunction mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And that so, you might not notice for a year. Yeah, yeah. It, and it could be like with dogs, I mean, at least they have a shorter lifespan, but for us, you know, some things might not happen 10, 20 years down the road. For them, sometimes we won't see that. Like, mm -hmm. there's an agility dog um, that was jumping beautifully, and then it, uh, I guess one of its trials, it crashed into the tire jump. This is before they broke away. Uh -huh. And uh, so it had a really bad crash, but seemed fine. And it was, they noticed over the next three years, it just started to decline. It was taking jumps too long, crashing bars and stuff like uh -huh. that. She's like, you know, I'm just gonna see her instructor was like, you know, talk to your vet and then we do have a chiropractor that comes mm -hmm. to see how, if you guys can work yeah. something out. And you know, there over the three years, how locked up those neck muscles got and whenever you touched a certain a spot, it would also contract to the right. Mm -hmm. And so once we got that neck functioning a lot better, the jumping started getting smoother, it started not hitting the bars mm -hmm. and um, training became easier and didn't want to quit as soon. So yeah. that's another point, like especially with these young animals, mm -hmm. they do have these things that can interfere with their concentration, yeah. oh, such yeah. with kids and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. people who are older dogs that are learning older, they can yeah. learn, old dogs can learn. Absolutely, nature. absolutely. And so, um, but yeah, just having that clear system definitely clears mm -hmm. up the brain fog. 
so that you can focus yeah. on what you're being asked. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. a great point too because we we start slow and we gradually you know mm -hmm. work up those distraction levels. Yeah. But definitely, I can see how that I have brain fog, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know with horse training, it just made I wasn't training against pain issues or biomechanical issues, uh -huh. and so my training program went really fast. And be like, well, what are you doing to force these horses? I'm like, I'm not. I'm just making sure that there's like actually the real goal was I whenever I got on a horse, I just didn't want to get bucked off. So <laughs> I was gonna make it as comfortable and happy as possible, and if we had a great, that was great. But usually, uh, probably 99% of the time, I was able to get right back to work. Some horses, they still had that mental, like, you know, bracing for the pain. But uh -huh. once they figure it out, oh, I'm not hurting there. I can move here. I can move freely. My saddle works with me, not against me. My rider's being really nice, not jabbing me in the face yeah. or you know, sitting heavy in my back. And so they figure animals want to be pleasing. They really mm -hmm. want to be happy and loving and. Um, really do their job for you yeah. and have this awesome relationship yes. so whenever I come across something that's just like eh, it's like mm, I don't want to do this or yeah. I, I usually say okay let's figure out what physically might be mm -hmm. bothering you. Yeah, I think too, too often we we don't really listen to what our animals are telling us. Uh, they it's always tell subtle. us everything. Right mm -hmm. just and you, even if you're not an expert at reading horse language or dog body language like just think about think about what that would mean if uh, if another person was doing, doing that similar you. thing. Yeah. If they were always shying away and squinting their eyes and yeah. tightening up versus a, versus an animal that's just relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, you bring up like in terms of people, and you know, so I get to work with abuse uh -huh. cases too, mm -hmm. and. Um, so, I mean, you see a different, you have a dog that gets really aggressive this way mm -hmm. and in your face because they've been abused, or you have the one that really shies away um, and is like, okay, if I'm provoked, I will lash out, yeah. but mm -hmm. I'm just going to be cowering here. You see that with people too. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you'll have ones that, like, you know, they become bigger so that they don't get hurt again, or they're just really reserved and shy. And the, what that does and impacts the nervous system there and getting, mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it's beautiful. I've gotten to watch these animals come out of their shell, you know, with, with the right people and then, you know, um, working with the vet and the chiropractic care mm -hmm. and also sometimes it's diet change because if the food is not giving it the nutrients that it needs, that's, mm -hmm. fuel is an important thing for yeah. people, animals, mm -hmm. you have to have the right, if you're giving them the same stuff, like, it's like having pop tarts for breakfast every night. Some people might like that, but you know your body's not gonna like it. Yeah, <laughs> and it creates a lot of yeah. inflammation too. So you have to take diet in consideration. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole another can of worms. <laughs> um, but it's really awesome to also see these dogs come out of their yeah. shell, and then like the next, it's like sometimes it will be the next time they see this. Oh, I remember you. So, or it might take a couple times, and then they're like, oh, they they might still be that stoked, but they come in. They look at you and they turn around and they sit and then they look back at you. <laughs> they're like, yeah. okay. And I mean, that's that's a big deal for yeah. some dogs, especially if yeah. they're not If they don't to be trust you, yeah. right, to, to give their back. Like, I trust yeah. you to touch me, not touch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then they're like, okay, I'm done. And they just go uh -huh. <laughs> do their thing. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's we, very cool. Uh, we had a lady that just adopted a border collie a couple, uh, two months, no, a month and a half ago. And so when she first brought her up, she was barking every, like, that also sparking everybody. She's like, I don't know how she's gonna be with you. Just see, and she first. So I just sat there on the ground, let her come up to me, and she's. I was a very suspicious person, uh -huh. and then she came out four weeks later, and it was just so cool. She's like, Hi, I missed you, and I'm like, She is the sweetest dog. But the owner also too was nurturing that uh -huh. relationship too, and she's like, I love people, whatever. You know, so uh -huh. it's, it's just really neat to see. That, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Um, well, thanks so much for coming out no today. Problem. Thank I you for inviting me. A couple, couple oh, other oh, he's okay. I, I was no like, problem. This, so, this is great. Uh, I know. <laughs> so, I'm sure you're as biased as we are, but is <laughs> is there any dog that could not benefit from chiropractic care? Oh, uh, <laughs> actually, probably a dead dog. It's yeah. probably the only dog that would not benefit from <laughs> from care because, like, I see dogs from just maybe a day old to mm -hmm. your. Um, like 18 year old dogs mm -hmm. that are still cruising around getting yeah. by and we're helping their quality of life and so mm -hmm. all in between there's just so much stress in our life nowadays and what we put our hands through. Well, our <laughs> stress, stress feeds off on yeah. them because and they, so they just absorb energy. Yeah and um, they feel everything that we do mm -hmm. and so now I don't unless it's said I don't think there's a dog <laughs> that couldn't benefit from chiropractic care. Is there 
Uh, so you kind of mentioned like with the dachshunds, the longer mm -hmm. back dogs, a couple things that we probably shouldn't be doing. Is there anything like in general that you see a lot that people should, outside of like, in the my opinion, area. totally negligence, like the, the flexi lead and stuff like that, <laughs> just like stuff that people would do with their dogs or let their dogs do repeatedly that's very bad for... So, um, I mean, there's, there's some... Gosh, this list is pretty good. <laughs> but no, the number one is like, of course, the lead stuff, the collar uh -huh. stuff, um, how you pick them up. Um, there are some people, don't be mad if you see this, but pull on their tails as play. <laughs> so I don't know if I have some clients watching, so I just, uh, but um, we've, we've gone through because I'm like, what is going on with this tail and pelvis? Um, and they thought about it, like, oh. Well, that's how we play. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Let's not play that way. I'm like, no. It's creating yeah. too much pelvic And torque. this is why I asked, because honestly, like, we've had this whole conversation, and I've talked to numerous chiropractors, and uh -huh. I had not thought, and I'm not, I would never encourage someone to, like, yank on the tail, but I, would, yeah. I wouldn't have really thought, you know, just yeah. pulling on the tail at all. It's not yeah. a good idea. And sometimes you have, like, the, your dogs that love to play tug, and you know what? I, I just say it's... You can't take that out of their life, but you can limit the time that you do it. So, uh -huh. especially if they're really aggressive Hard with the time. Yeah. yeah, and give, I mean, because it's like the flexi lead, they're giving themselves mm -hmm. whiplash. Um, you know, tennis ball throwing. Um, you know, our, I'm, I met my husband in Peens later life. That's, we have an almost 15 year old dog, and so he's got some arthritic changes and some changes in his elbow. Um, and so, but that was from hours and hours of playing tennis ball and catching the frisbee and um, being a weekend warrior with that too and so that's definitely affected his life mm -hmm. and so we keep him really comfortable with swimming and chiropractic care and PEMF therapy as well so um, and he's just trucking along um, so just like making sure you don't over but if you're doing those sports and you see that they're physically active you know it doesn't hurt to get them checked every once in a while to make sure mm -hmm. that it doesn't keep on continuously building yeah. on each other um, so, you know, so uh, you said like with frizzy and tennis balls, mm -hmm. was it really just the, the constant running? or Yeah, it'd be hours on hours. Yeah. So yeah. hours at one You'd time. have to be like... At Everything a in moderation. Yeah, <laughs> so it would be at a family event, and so you'd have five kids throwing him a ball, and he wouldn't stop. Like, yeah. it's not ball drive. Yes, mm -hmm. and so, um, and you know, when a dog has that much drive, mm -hmm. they will go through pain, and then it's afterwards yes. they can't move for like a week, yeah. so... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, other thing, like if you are very active with your dog, don't make them a weekend warrior. Don't say, oh, they're gonna sit at home all day for two weeks, and then we're gonna go do this um, eight-hour hike yeah. and expect them to recover really fast afterwards. So you want to keep them active on a daily basis, yeah. at least you know minimum twenty-minute walk. You know, mm -hmm. if you can do a little bit more, that's great. Um, what's some other things for the little dogs? And you have a huge tall bed, letting them jump up and down on it mm -hmm. because. Over time, it's a repetitive stress that yeah. can lead to injury. So, what would be a huge tall bed? So, like, so if you have like a little fifteen-pound dog, a huge tall bed. What is that? Thirty inches, Eric? Twenty-four. Probably like three, no, three to four. So, feet. like, if you have something that's, oh, I'm short though. So, so yeah. hip height, maybe three hip feet. Height. <laughs> so, two to three. Uh, yeah. I would say probably about three feet, give yeah. or take. But then you'll have people like, well, I put upstairs and they still all choose to jump up yeah. and down. But, you know, there are ways you can help make it easier. Mm -hmm. You just, it's like you want to help prolong mm -hmm. those yeah. kind of things. Um, other things, oh, yeah, not feeding your dogs from the ground, having elevated bowls over time. That that's doesn't allow them to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if it's just a little bit. Like, that's going to yeah. compound. And so, like that, I think because they're not, ha it kind of makes them cheat. They're really lazy. And then pushing them around in a stroller all the time. You know, as a young, yeah. starting as a your, young puppy. Your five pound dog can walk. Yes, it can. So my 15 pound dog, well, she's 17. She should be 15. But she will outrun me any day. I can take her for an eight mile run. Uh -huh. She does twice the amount. Um, where, where was I going with this? We're talking, oh yeah. Walk your five pound dog. So yeah, we, and we'd go out on hikes because she's just a very active dog. Mm -hmm. And so when we go on just a, an hour hike and she out hikes the German <laughs> Shepherd and the owner's carrying him back, that's pretty bad. Yeah, so yeah. your little dog can walk. <laughs> so. And we've had, I mean, our schnauzer's getting older and there's been a couple times, mm -hmm. um, okay, really just one time because we, we really did it like it. We took him downtown and 
um, he walked for a little bit, and then yeah. he crawled into the bottom of the stroller, and he's like, I'm out. Yeah. And so, but at least he yeah. did stop yeah, motion. Yeah, he, he got as much as he wanted, yeah. and then he was like, okay, guys, you're either going to have to carry me or put me in here. Yeah, and people um, are some... And we also took that to know he didn't like that. Like, yeah. that was too much stress for him, and that's yeah. not a happy... Even though we liked having him with mm-hmm. us, he did it. So reading and it the could, dog. Yeah. And he he's was, blind, by the way, so <laughs> it, it, was, it was quite a task. <laughs> he's probably like, if you're in downtown Greenville, the cars he's right, hearing, the, the people, smells, and he's probably just like, you know what, I'm safe here. Yes, yeah. And so, like, even the ground, it could be a lot different for dogs working out on cement versus on the trail. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, um, but, you know, like, with our older guy, he does so much better when we can... So, he's not as good with doing the longer walks mm-hmm. now, but if we sw- swim him, mm-hmm. that's so much easier on his joints. So, we found another way he can be active and yeah. still work yeah. in... Because when you continuously help them condition their body Mm -hmm. and keep the muscles strong around the whole skeletal system that's another added benefit too so yeah we do encourage our mastiff to swim she's just extremely lazy (laughs) i will get in and swim to the one side and get out (laughs) like can we do this again like 15 more times like oh it's funny it is funny to try to see her work because she does not like it yeah Um, so so i saw on your website you have a picture with a ferret so uh, what? There's probably a ferret. There might be a raccoon on there. So Is what? A what all animals yeah. do you or do you not? Um. So there's a lot of different animals that I adjust, and so um, probably some of the most interesting ones that I have adjusted: a boa constrictor and a wallaby, um, a, a lizard. Uh, sometimes there's bunny rabbits, hamsters. People. Bring, if they're bringing their dog, they're like, my kid's hamster wasn't eating very well, and the vet's just like, eh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, but it's like, you have to be, so there's, it's, people bring you up, once they figure out, oh, you know, how about, have you adjusted this it's before? Spine. Yeah. And so, anything with a spine can definitely benefit from chiropractic care, um, and, but that could have been the little baby raccoon. I've adjusted a couple of raccoons, because there's a lady that rescues them, okay. and, um, there's one that, uh, when I used to travel down to Aiken, I had adjust down there. She had a raccoon rescue, but she usually rescues them and then releases them. Yeah. But this one had some, like, when it first started coming in, every step, it would just start rolling on the side. Uh-huh. And so and they would come up. So it definitely had something neurological oh, yeah. going on. The vet there, she was doing rehab with it, which was pretty interesting. And then she would get, um, she'd come in for her adjustments. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty cool to see the change for her in just a couple visits, how then she was able to walk around the whole room without knowing where yeah, her feet yeah. was stumbling. And so that was a big thing for her because she's like, I'm not gonna be able to release this raccoon, but okay. how is she gonna survive in my you know, right. setup that I have for her? But now she's able to move around and move around on her setup. The life changer and, right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Noticeable. Yeah. The immediate almost. So um, and so we're probably doing kind of good things for that one. That's so. awesome. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, lots of fun yeah. animals. <laughs> <laughs> we had a gecko, uh, Slevin. She passed away when she was 15 or 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the longest time, about half, maybe more than half of her life, I worked at a pet store and she used to go with me. Mm-hmm. And um, so the boy was holding her and she was a crested gecko, so they jump and glide. Yeah. Um, well, she did that onto the hard floor, though. And yeah. ever since then, she literally had this, like, kink. In her back. back, and I always knew that her spine was was messed yeah. up, but I didn't know the term subluxation. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think of we it. weren't even seeing it right yeah. for us humans, let alone our gecko. Um, but yeah, I could totally if I like knowing what I know now, I probably would have just like <laughs> tried to see if I could I mean, just do it. <laughs> uh, Let me just press here because that's just me. I do the things that you should not do. Um, but yeah, I just that makes sense. I oh, know you have no. People that come in like, yeah, I saw a video on YouTube once, and I tried to work on my dog, and I'm like, no. did you get bit? That's why I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't post videos of that. No, no. But because um, you guys make it look so easy, you think, oh, I could do that. Like years and years of practice. Go that's like this, right? I had the same conversation on my console about a dog, a, a, a client, or not a client, a person who was using the remote trainer and e-collar mm-hmm. not the right way. Yeah. And I'm like, well, he's probably just saw a video of somebody using it, thinking, oh, you can get those kind of results. Shoot, I, I could do that. I push a button right. um, yeah. but not knowing yeah. the psychology behind it and the yeah. teaching and all that conditioning that they just like no he's not he yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but there but is yeah. a, an interest one of my friends is a chiro- animal chiropractor as well he was working on an iguana that was it would stay I think brown from midsection down and wow. so the owner brought it in 
to get adjusted. And I think that one was my, I can't remember if it was a digestive issue or something. Mm -hmm. Something weird was going on. It wasn't for that reason. Right. But as he adjusted him, all of a sudden the color started to come oh, back. So and wow. I've seen that in dogs too. I had a dog that came with a disc issue. And you could see the change of fur of where it happened. And as we, over a couple of months, because it was chronic, he had, yeah. he had been that way for years before he yes. found out that animal chiropractic resisted. But over the course of a couple of months, his coat started to change. Yes. And that was really, I'm like, I need to take pictures of those. Yes. I'm like, do we have a before yes. picture? I'm like, when did he go in? Yes. And so, because that was one of the things I'm like, that's really interesting. He has a changed coat. Mm -hmm. And then the owner had pointed out, it's moving. And I'm like, what do you mean it's moving? I'm like, oh my gosh, it is. I'm like, that's not the segment where the color change was. And his hair color started to change. So that was that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That cool was actually, experience. so when we went to the uh, doggy chiropractic seminar, mm -hmm. um, she, she showed pictures of a dog that had hair loss. Yeah. Like, just spots of hair just missing and could not walk its hind legs did not walk yeah. which I don't want to say is common in older age but a lot of people think it is yeah. and they think well it's just him getting older he lost the use of his back legs mm -hmm. and um, luckily his owner did not take no for it she didn't accept that so she yeah. saw um, the chiropractor and literally the before and after pictures I think it was only a three month difference between the yeah. pictures but the one the dog was like on death bed like, yeah. just did not look like it was going to live another day mm -hmm. um, and looked miserable like it didn't want to live another day yeah. and then just beautiful white fluffy coat and running yeah. with a smile on its face so I'm like ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's such a sob story but it was just so awesome mm -hmm. that it just seemed there's Chiropractic a lot of is so that system. subtle, mm -hmm. and it just has such a profound um, effect, and I just I think that's awesome. That's cool. <laughs> so, if somebody wants to seek your services, yes. how do they find out where to find you? Or okay, um, well, <laughs> that's the easy part. They can either contact me. I mean, all the information is on my website, theanimalchiro.com. And uh, usually there's quite a few vets that know me in the area. They usually will send their referral for there. Um, and then they can just contact me directly and we can see, they, we can talk over the phone, see what's going on with their dog and then see if, you know, working with their vet too to mm -hmm. make sure that we're ruling out all possible issues that might be going on with that dog. And, but, you know, okay, cool. so time. we'll put that in the um, uh, we'll put it in the comments. comments. Thank you, I couldn't think of that word. <laughs> Um, I think I need an adjustment. Um, <laughs> TheAnimalChiro.com. And um, thank you so much for coming yeah. out. Well, thank you. This, this was really fun. awesome. And if you guys have questions, I have not been checking. Um, so if there <laughs> have been questions, because I've just been so engaged. Um, if you do have questions, let us know. And if we have enough questions, we might have um, Dr. Natasha come back out and do like a recap Q&A. Um, but this has been awesome. I've yeah, learned yeah. so much. Um, I, I hope your mind's as blown as mine because this has been amazing. Um, and we just really appreciate having you out. Oh, I appreciate yeah. you guys too. Thanks Thank for coming. You. Thank you fun. for helping change dogs' lives too. You guys are making a huge difference. Cool. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.